Hey, so we're going to be going over some tools in Maya today. So this is primarily going to be a lesson in polygonal modeling tools, but we're also going to go over some of uh, some Maya basics just as a refresher. So hopefully you know some of this from last week, so this first part will be a review. So this is Maya. I currently have my workspace as modeling standard, as it's good for modeling. Sometimes I use Maya Classic. I might leave it in here just because it's what I started with. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do when we come into Maya for the first time is we're always going to come to File, Project Window, and we're going to make a new project. Organization is super important. Uh, I really can't stress this enough. And if you fail to do this project portion, you will be losing points. So it's, it's free, easy points out on the table. So when you're starting a new Maya project, just come here, click New, give it a good name, and pick its location, and then we'll hit Accept. Uh, so I've already made a project, uh, and if you're returning to your project for, say, homework, or your final, uh, come to File, Set Project, and you can pick uh, where you're going to set it, in a, your, wherever your projects live, um, or wherever you take your projects. Uh, you'll see why this is handy outside of just the need for organization later. So there's a couple things we'll need before we start modeling, namely reference photos and measurements. So we went over this last week, uh, so you should be taking good photos. Uh, a lot of your reference photos for objects can be done with a phone, but preferably not uh, because of uh, the focal length and distortion you'll get from a cell phone picture. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of cameras will give you perspective distortion. So if we look at this example, so there's a GIF showing uh, the problem that you can have with different uh, focal lengths. So as you can see, this is a stopped version, longer focal lengths will give us a nice flat image, uh, whereas shorter focal lengths will show a lot of perspective distortion. So when you need something as reference to model from, you should be trying to get as little perspective as possible. Uh, so you can do that by getting closer to a telephoto lens, um, and you can kind of fake this effect. If you have a zoom lens, you can zoom all the way in and move back, and you can kind of kill some of the distortion. Uh, camera lenses won't ever give you a perfect uh, like orthogonal image, but you'll get pretty close. Um, and measurements are important because everything you should model should always be to scale, um, which may not seem important right now, but when you're working with other people and you're working with other pieces of software, scale becomes really, really important, and uh, I'm constantly angry at the modelers at my company for not modeling things to scale. Um, so here is an image that we're going to be working with today, just a little uh, power outlet uh, plug guy. So I've already got the measurements, and as we can see, if I hit spacebar and tab into my quad view, uh, you can see I've already kind of set this up um, to the correct measurements that I need. Um, if Maya defaults to centimeters, so in uh, if we come up to Windows, Settings and Preferences, Preferences, and come down to Settings, is, uh, you can see that we're in centimeters. You can change this, um, but I would recommend for now just leaving it in centimeters to prevent confusion. So lining this up in Photoshop and leaving these measurement notes on uh, is helpful. This way we can get uh, the best reference we can. Um, but I don't like this kind of image to model from, so I have these three other images that I've kind of just cut up in Photoshop, gotten them to the scale I want them. Uh, so this is one way to set up reference images. It doesn't have to be your way. Uh, so what I've done to do this is I've come up to Create, Free Image Plane, and it'll give me a free image plane here, which you can just move about wherever you want. And I come over to the Attributes Editor, which if that's hidden is this button with these rectangles up here. Uh, and under Image Name, 
uh, we will just give it an image. So I've put these images, as you can see, in my source images folder in my well-named project. Um, and that's one of the handy things about the project management system is that you can have all of these images kind of auto-complete um, and fill up because this is these are the folders that Maya looks for by default. So I just added a bunch of those um, and then come over to my channel box, scaled them correctly, moved them about uh, as I needed to create this little thing that I know is lined up and good to model with. Um, but I don't want to be able to select them, so really quickly, uh, a good note about Maya is down here we have uh, this display layers box. Uh, this is similar to like Photoshop's layers panel. So what I can do is select, uh, so this is my outliner, which also if that is hidden, you can come to Windows Outliner or hit the Outliner button over here. Um, so I can grab my image planes and I can come over and there's a couple buttons on the display uh, window here. This last one will create a new layer uh, with these selected objects in it. Um, so that will be my layer one. So you've got V for visibility, um, P for something that I don't remember what it does. Uh, and then the third box will give you template and reference. So reference will make it so that you can see the object, but you can't click on it or select it, uh, which is handy. So there's lots of different ways to go about modeling. Uh, what we're going to start with is what is commonly referred to as box modeling. And before I get into that, uh, I guess I should also mention that I have this uh, heads up display in Maya, which you can turn on uh, what you see in that up here in display. Uh, and this will give us uh, our vertice count, uh, our edge count, faces which are quad faces which we'll get into in to a second uh tri triangle faces which should be about double regular faces and uvs which we'll get to in a couple weeks so we've got our poly modeling shelf up here which has a bunch of helpful tools uh we're in our modeling context menu up here in this drop down which gives us this uh toolbar at the top with mesh edit mesh mesh tools mesh display all these um, fun bars over here. Um, we can also get to some of our uh, polygon tools with a shift right click while we're in the uh, modeling context. And that'll give us a lot of the same stuff um, in these hot boxes. So let's shift right click uh, and holding down space will give you uh, the hot box, which gives you essentially this top menu uh, kind of in your screen. But what I want to focus on in this course is the modeling toolkit, which is sort of the new component to Maya's modeling tools. It's only been around for a couple versions. Uh, so you can open that by hitting the little hammer and box up here. Uh, the other hammer button up here will bring up our tool options, which will be helpful as well. So the modeling toolkit is nice because it kind of puts in a lot of what you'll need in one, one convenient spot over here. So like many models, we're going to start this model with a humble cube. Uh, so we'll click cube and that will give us a unit cube. So just a one by one by one. Um, I usually start my models from a cube. A lot of uh, like cylinders and spheres can be helpful, but most models start as a as a simple cube. So I'm gonna quick hide this, and I'm just gonna talk sort of freely about what we can do. So uh, Q on the keyboard is our select, W is our translate, uh, E is our rotate, and R is our scale. Um, of course, I'm alt-clicking to rotate, alt-right-clicking to zoom, um, and mouse wheel to zoom as well. Uh, oops. And you can, if you get kind of thrown away, you can always hit F with something selected to focus these rotations around that. 
the middle mouse uh, wheel click to pan. So our cube here, uh, we can do a lot of stuff to it. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, extrusions. So if we right click on our cube, we get our little uh, wheel of modes we can be in. So we can select the edges, we can select the faces, we can select uh, the vertices, uh, which you can also do from the toolkit over here, uh, including multi-component, which will kind of let you freely switch between the three, uh, which can be pretty handy. So right now the cube has started and it's a it's a water type model um, and what I mean by that is that it doesn't have faces deleted away from it. So if we select a face and hit delete on the keyboard, you can see that we've you know opened the cube up so to speak. Uh, and inside of it is black, um, which is Maya's new way of kind of telling you that this isn't what's supposed to be facing out. Uh, so that has to do with the polygonal face is normal, which we'll get to uh, later in the term, but you can kind of tell if you see this like very black surface, it's kind of the, the model's kind of inside out. Um, so we don't ever really want to see into a model like this. You can see, you can kind of think of it uh, that these faces kind of have razor sharp edges um, and nothing really kind of physically exists like this, or at least it, it ruins the illusion that it's a solid 3D object. So I'm just going to Control Z, my way back to my cube. So the cube also all starts with all of the faces are, you know, four sided, you know, four edges, uh, quad shapes, and that's good. Quads are kind of what we aim for. Uh, triangles are fine, uh, at least for models that are gonna be used for for games and such, but they're not ideal kind of to work with, they, they make things much harder to model with. Um, and then faces that are more than four sides are uh, referred to as n-gons, and those are bad, bad, we don't want them. Uh, and I'll try and show you some examples of what I mean by n-gons. But, so if I st start by selecting a face, um, one of the tools I can use is the extrude tool. Uh, you'll primarily extrude faces. There's rarely times you'll extrude edges or vertices. So I'll click extrude and I'll switch to my extrude tool, which looks very similar to the move tool. Uh, but I get this little dialog option. Um, so there's different ways you can use these tools in Maya. You can kind of get uh, physical with it and just use the, uh, you know, the little manipulator that's added. So if we click on the little cubes, we get um, our scale tools, we get our moving tools, and we get this rotate tool, uh, and this will change the pivot of that as well. Um, but you can see that our dialog box has changed as well, so we can change a lot of these um, kind of controls from this box as well, uh, including subdivisions here, which will add edges, um, which can be helpful. And the last one's keep faces together, which uh, I'll show you a better example of that if we create a polyplane. Move it over here. Um, so if I switch to faces and double click, uh, I'll select all of the faces in this plane here. You can see them lit up. Uh, so if I extrude this and pull it, you see I you know, kind of get a predictable extrude up. So now I have this sort of brick. Um, but if I set this to keep faces together off, um, actually, let's do that from the beginning. If I do that, um, and then use my scale tools as well, you can see I, I can split these faces up, and now I get uh, this kind of effect. A sort of like egg crate sort of thing. Sound baffling. So that's the basics of the extrude tool, which um, to me, most of what modeling is, is extruding 
and moving components around to make your object look like the object you want it to look like. Um, and everything outside of that is kind of stuff you'll do infrequently. Most of the stuff you'll be doing is extrude. So you're well on your way to being a very talented modeler. Another note uh, to kind of save your sanity later down the road is if you check out down here, we've got our little directional gnomon. Uh, so we've got y up, x to r right, and z is forward. Uh, it's very important down the road to make sure that all of your models are facing z. So if you're to be modeling like a human being, their eyes uh, and like belly button would be pointing down the z-axis uh, and you should just try and follow that with kind of everything you make uh, again like moving it into like unity or unreal or or zbrush or wherever uh, it's important to keep that consistent so as i was saying earlier you don't really want to uh, start something with a lot of complexity. You want to slowly build up to it, uh, and that's why extrusions and moving stuff are kind of primarily what I think modeling is about, uh, at least in the early phases. Because uh, if you start with too much resolution, uh, you know, too many extrusions, too many edges, too many faces, it just becomes kind of overbearing to work with. But there are ways to slowly ramp up to, to having more detail um, to our models. So one of them is extrusions. Um, another way from the beginning, uh, in our inputs over on our channel box, we can increase the subdivision uh, of our of our cube. So what I did there was just uh, drag select these three channels and use a middle mouse click and drag to drag that out to three. So you can see our cube has a lot more faces um, to it, which can help us start to define shapes a little bit more easily. But also this is a, a good time to talk about another feature of 3D, mod 3D modeling, which is topology. So to topology refers to the sort of nature of the surface of a, of a 3D object, and primarily what it refers to is edge flow or face flow. Um, so edge flow is how the edges travel around the 3D object. So you can see this by selecting a face, holding down the shift key, and double clicking an adjacent face. And you can see that it's selected these faces uh, around in a ring because these faces travel around the, like the, the equator of this object. The same if we select this one, shift, and double click this one, it follows around this way. So that should always remain sensical and is also a really good way to help you model but also help define, uh, define a surface. So if you have something, say like a car, you would want your edges to sort of swoop and follow along the curves and shape of the car. Um, we'll get more in depth on that kind of stuff later. So meanwhile in the modeling toolkit we have a bunch of other tools. I believe last week the bonus tool on the slides was the insert edge loop tool, which is a really good tool, so we'll come back to the modeling toolkit. Um, the insert edge loop tool, so if we come down and uh, these little boxes next to the names of tools will open up their options, um, if you don't have the tool settings open already. So the insert edge loop tool, if you click on your on your object, it'll allow you to sort of drag out these edges and start adding, you know, more edges to your object as you go. Uh, you can also do multiple edge loops if you tick that radio button. Um, and the cool trick to this, you know, you can add uh, however many edges you want at a time. But the cool thing about this is that if you set it to one. Uh, it will always place the edge directly 50% uh, between its two neighboring edges. So you can see it's kind of always perfectly in the middle there. 
But there's a another tool for that, and that's uh, in the modeling toolkit, and it's called the multi-cut tool with this little pen knife. So the multi-cut tool will allow you to kind of click, and it'll add a vert uh, vertex, and then you can click another edge, it'll add another vertex, and if we click out, uh, so I just hit Q and clicked away, you can see we added this edge. Uh, so that's a good way to cut into the faces, but you'll see that uh, so this is a quad and this is a quad, but this and this are no longer quads. So this is now one, two, three, four, five sides. So we don't want that. That's that's really bad. Um, it will render improperly. It will cause uh, issues with our texture. Uh, just you need to have all your faces need to be four sides. That's just a rule. Uh, so if we want to get rid of this uh, and we hit delete and we jump into our vertex mode, you'll notice that these verts are still here. And that's no good. That's just like having an edge there, because these are still one, two, three, four, five sides, even though we don't see the edge there. So I'm gonna control Z, undo that. So if you ever want to delete an edge, what you should do is select it and then hit control delete, or command delete if you're on a Mac. And that way you delete the edge and the vertices with it and your object's nice and clean. So I'm going to delete this and get into modeling this object. So I'm going to jump back into our channel box, turn on our reference images and grab a fresh cube. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, hit spacebar, jump into my quad view, hit spacebar again to dive into this one. I'm going to switch to vertex mode and actually let's go back. Let's hop into our modeling toolkit and in our modeling toolkit we have a setting for symmetry uh, which does what it sounds like uh, except because it's Maya it doesn't quite always work the way you want it but for now let's set it to object X so it's mirrored left and right and if we switch to ver vertex mode, uh, I can grab the vertex over here, and then we'll grab the vertex over here, and I did a drag select so that when I jump back over into my perspective, you can see that I got both the front and back. If I just click, I'll only get the front. So I'm gonna drag select my verts and sort of pull uh, these edges, or these verts, so I can start getting the right size of my object, and if I hop into this view, getting the right width, my image is a little off center so that's not quite right, uh, so I'm going to turn symmetry back off, just grab all of these with a drag select and move them over, and rough in that shape. Um, and to prevent symmetry from breaking in the future, what I'm going to do is use the multi-cut tool like uh, the insert edge loop tool. So I'm going to click it, and if I hold down control, you can see that it goes from the pen knife here to this insert edge loop tool. Um, oops, zoomed in. Uh, and if I hold down shift, it'll snap. Um, so I can kind of eyeball the 50%, uh, so it's halfway down the cube. Uh, and then in symmetry, we can use the topology of an object to define its symmetry. So again, that's the, the edge flow. So if I select uh, topology, it'll ask me for an edge. So I'll just select this one. And now you can see I have my symmetry working. Um, so from there, I'm going to try and get these uh, rounded edges in on this. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is again I'm going to use my multi-cut tool um, and hold down control to get my insert edge loop and I'm just going to click so I'm going to add one going down and I'm going to add sort of one across here and one at the bottom and then what I can do from there is grab these corner pieces and move them to start to give me a slightly rounded look. And then I can start to 
come in here and you know size it up a little bit better. And I can grab these vertices and start to kind of move them out, shape them up, get it where it needs to be. You know, it's not 100% there yet, but it's a good start. Now check our other images, make sure that we're still lining up and in scale. That looks good. We can also do one around the sides here and double click to select that whole edge going around. Uh, and we can use the scale tool. To kind of get that, you know, roundness around the sides as well. So you can come in and keep, you know, defining and redefining, you know, smoothness with with more and more resolution. Kind of doing the same thing. Um, but I'll move on for that for a sec. So if we if we look at this, uh, we need to start deciding what detail is worth modeling uh, and what what detail is not. So you know stuff like the cable, um, the prongs, all of the stuff that's like very big. We clearly want to model this this little divot in the side. We're gonna want to model that as well. But like this this text here and these screws, um, we have to think about the text. I would definitely say we're not gonna bother modeling. That's something we'll do with a texture. Uh, and you know some bump mapping to kind of fake that that would be kind of ridiculous to model all these letters It's a big uh, a big job um, These screws uh, Depends it depends, you know what the the use of this object is um, But for now, let's say we would probably do those uh, as textures as well so what I would probably start with is figuring out how to do these prongs and this little divot here, um, you know, given the information we have uh, about it. So I would start with the prongs. So again, uh, what I would do is grab my multi-cut tool. Uh, you know, I would start by defining kind of where the prongs are on the object. Um, and this object's pretty asymmetrical because of the divot and because of the wires. So maybe at this point I'll, I'll ditch symmetry. Um, so I'll start kind of defining these prongs in here. Uh, maybe I move you know, double click to select that edge and slide it over. And we start to get these prongs here. But kind of the, just the outline of them. So then what I'll want to do is, uh, you know, since I'm in multi-component mode, I can just select the faces. And then from there, jump back out. Um, and I can either hit extrude or if I hold down shift while I have the move tool active, you can see uh, it says extrude under my cursor there. So I can actually just extrude from there. Um, I've moved my object a little bit, so I'm gonna slide it back into place and you know see how we're doing um, with how far this far out this extrusion should be. Um, Maybe it seems a little big. Maybe my my photos are a little off. So you'll notice when I double click this edge, it won't go all the way around because of uh, this extrusion that we've made. So this is another feature of polygonal modeling uh, that we should talk about, which is called a pull. So in here, we've got a vertex, you know, this little guy right here. 
Uh, and then coming off of that vertex, we have one, two, three, four, five edges that all meet in that one location. Uh, that's fine. And technically speaking, we should never really go over five edges meeting at one point. Uh, it's not the end of the world for a hard surface object. If you were modeling like a person or something that animated, uh, you definitely wouldn't want over five because it, it would start to cause problems with the animation. But for us right now, all that's preventing us from doing is having a nice easy time selecting this. So if we double click it, it goes all around except, uh, but stops when it hits the pole. So we'll just hold down shift and add it to our selection by hand. Uh, and grab the selection below as well. And then we can jump over to our side and scale that in and get our prongs in. And those are probably maybe a little thick, so maybe we'll also have to come in and thin them out a little bit so we can switch to our face mode. Um, you know, thin those out just by grabbing the faces opposite to each other. Oops, let me hide that. Just make it a little easier to see. I'll grab these two faces, shrink it down. If I, you know, had the measurements to this on hand, this would be easier. Um, and I would probably want to go back in and straighten out those edges or maybe redo that extrude so it was, you know, you don't have these sort of crooked uh, diagonal edges down here, like these guys, but it's not the end of the world. But now we also want to, you know, define the shape of these prongs kind of sticking out. So I'll probably grab another edge loop in there. See how that looks. Maybe add more, um, you know, slowly build up. I'm not gonna sit here and show you every step of the way. You'll have to figure something out on your own. But while we're down here, let's figure out how to cut these holes into, into the prongs here. So I'm gonna switch to object mode, and if I hit H, I can hide it, uh, hide my model, but it's still over here in the outliner. So you can see we've got these holes in our prongs, um, and we'll have to figure out how to add those in and make them round. So something I talk about in all my modeling classes and something that you should uh, definitely know whether you are a animation, like modeling for animation or modeling for games, is the notion of the eight-sided cylinder. So if I come up to my modeling shelf and I create a cylinder, drag it over here so you can see it, it's really dense uh, to start with. And if we check our inputs, you can see it's got 20 subdivision um, you know, going around the circle. Um, and that's really high, which, um, which is nice because it looks round, but it's like pretty hard to work with. Um, it's pretty high poly. Um, don't like it. Don't like it at all. So what I always do is come over to my inputs and start all my cylinders at eight. Um, and eight's a, a magic number for a lot of reasons. Um, the other thing I like to do is because I don't like these triangles, I usually cut these out and I'll show you in a minute uh, how to put those caps back on in a way that resolves to quads instead of tries. Um, so eight's a really magic number because there's uh, you know some lighting tricks, some lighting trickery and texture trickery that uh, you can make an eight-sided shape look pretty round to the casual observer. Uh, if you play video games and you go and you look at maybe smaller details in in the world like a like a dinner plate on a table or a lampshade in an office or something uh, undoubtedly they're going to be eight-sided um and eight sides also just works out really well uh to work with 
and have things still look around. Uh, so we'll come back to that in a sec. So the idea is we want to, uh, you know, punch a hole out of our out of our mesh here, and have it be a nice round hole. So what I'm going to do is grab our multi-cut tool again, and you can see that we've kind of developed this weird angle because uh, of adding this detail in here. So maybe I would do this in a different order. Maybe I'll get rid of that and add that detail in later. So this part's a little easier on me. Um, so I'm gonna add my multi-cut tool and figure out where the hole was. And I'm gonna add some edges to, to define what is essentially an eight-sided shape that I'm gonna cut into a hole. All right, so that might be a little confusing at first, but essentially what we want is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides to be our hole. So there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, where did Maya put that cool new thing? So let's hide our reference real quick. So if we grab both of uh, these edges, so we have our two eight sides uh, on each side of here, up on our shelf, this is a new tool to Maya called Circularize, which is a pretty helpful shortcut to this process. So if we tap that, you can see that our edges have now turned themselves into an eight-sided circle. Which is great. So what I'm going to do then is grab these faces and delete them and grab these faces and delete them and now we've got our hole. However we don't really like we can't leave this hole cut away we can't you know like I said earlier you don't want to be able to see into the mesh we want to be able to have that be watertight. So there's a couple of different ways we can go about doing this a couple of different tools to use. Um, the first one I want to show is the bridge tool. So if we select this uh, ring, so just double click, and you can see the edge flow allows us to you know, click, uh, double click and get the circle. Uh, we can hit the bridge tool, and you can see it fills in. Uh, and the bridge tool is really neat. Uh, you can add divisions right in there. Um, taper and twist are not going to show us. Oh, yeah. You can get kind of funky effects, you know, almost like a camera aperture effect going on there. Um, and it's really handy. It's a really great way um, if you have holes or you want to connect something, so maybe like a cross beam uh, in, in a chair or something, you know, you can just bridge faces um, and fill, fill in your hole that way. And then that allows us, we can come in here and double click this and use our scale tool uh, and we can rescale our hole. And then maybe we would want to come in and again, I, I'm not a fan of these like crooked edges, so maybe I would want to come in and just kind of clean up what I got. Just kind of square everything up. Maybe spend some more time, do a better job. Uh, and then go back in, and now that I have some geometry here, I can really define that, um, you know, that the shape of the prong, um, you know, making this hole gave me all this extra geometry to work with. And now we have, you know, a lot of, there's like a little divot to it, um, a lot of happy accidents happened uh, that give us kind of a nice shape. Um, so if you're a if you're a game student, maybe at this point you're starting to think about poly count, which is a good thing to think about. Um, you know the number of faces, number of triangles in a model. You know for video games, especially something like a mobile game, you would want to keep uh, very low. 
uh, whenever you can. But for this class and for these assignments right now, we're not going to worry too much. You know, get used to the tools, get used to making things uh, that have detail in them, uh, and get comfortable doing that before you worry about, you know, how to make them cheaper. Uh, by cheaper, I mean like less, less edges, less faces. Another thing we could have done uh, was do these prongs kind of floating in space and uh, use the mirror tool on these prongs to get them done at the same time, uh, and then stitch them onto the model, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, another thing we could do is we could um, not quite uh, copy and paste because there's no there's no concept of copy and pasting in in Maya in the traditional sense, uh, but there's a way we can go over later about how to sort of grab this and apply it over there. Um, but before that, uh, you can use the same uh, method of cutting this hole out to add, uh, add cylinders onto a flat surface, which is another really large part of you know, hard surface modeling. We move our object up a little bit and we can see that we want to add, uh, you know, get this, uh, you know, plug added in this cable. Um, so I'm going to use some of the geometry we have already up here. Oh, it looks like it's pretty good. Uh, again, grab my multi cut tool, kind of add these. You know, bounding faces, and again, uh, so there's a trick Maya has now, which is the circularize tool, so we can really quickly, um, whoops, that was not the right button, this button, circularize. So it gets a bit funny, because uh, we're working at an angle. But we can always use our rotate tool to kind of straighten that out. Um, okay. Maybe grab a extra face. Nope. All right. Just went a little funny. So if that doesn't, if that tool doesn't work out for you, the the other option uh, of circularize doesn't work out in your favor. If Maya kind of hiccups and messes up, uh, the old school method would be to bring a cylinder over uh, and kind of trace it. So if we come up here, uh, the top of our viewport has a lot of different options to view objects. So we can turn on wireframe and shaded mode. Uh, and we can use our cylinder here. I forget, yeah. To kind of set up where our circle should be. And then we can grab these verts, and we can, in this view, we can kind of just move and line them up, but we can also hold down the V key to snap to verts. That'll get kind of funky if we're not careful. You can see we snap to the top, so the bottom, and even that we don't really want because it's not flush, so we can bring this kind of down to surface level. And we can use the V key to kind of snap the, ver the vertices into place. Uh, I have a pretty big pet peeve of people saying vertice as the singular instead of vertex, and I find myself doing it myself sometimes, and it's a real bummer. We've kind of messed with the surface a little bit there, so we'll also grab the faces and sort of even those out so that that surface is nice and flat still. And then again, we can just cut away these faces. Um, and then we can actually use this cylinder as a way to start this cabling. So right now these are two separate objects. So there are two separate things in our outliner, two discrete pieces of geometry. 
uh, and we can't connect to you know two pieces of geometry together we can only connect strangely enough a single piece of geometry to itself so what we need to do is combine them so if we click our first mesh and click our second mesh we can combine meshes so what that has done has given us a single piece of geometry to work with However, they're not technically connected. So if I switch to my edges and I grab this edge, you can see I can open it right up. It's not watertight. The hole, although small, is still there. So the way we can fix this is by using the target weld or the merge operations in Maya. So if I click on target weld, uh, you can see my edges light up red. So I can do this with edges or I can do, these, uh, do this with vertices. Um, so you just kind of click on your first one and drag it towards where you want to, to have it meet up. Similarly, we can grab two uh, vertices that are close together and use our edit mesh. Uh, we can merge, uh, or we can merge to center, which will you know, average the distance between the two. Um, and a helpful tip in Maya that I forgot to mention is, say we, we want to go all around the circle doing this operation, uh, and that can get pretty tedious, but if we hit the G key on the keyboard, it'll repeat the last tool we've used. So in this case, merge to center. We can really quickly start to fly around, hit G, uh, and get this done. Nice. So now it is one piece of geometry. It's watertight. So if we wiggle it around, it's all good. And lower this down and start, you know, modeling that that wire coming out of it. And you can see that this has a, a pretty interesting start to a, a pretty interesting edge flow. So if we grab the multi-cut tool, uh, you know it worked because our edges will roll right up into the cylinder we added. And if we add one, we can shoot an edge right around the cylinder and it doesn't affect uh, the, the rest of the cube that it's built into, which is pretty nice. So this model isn't complete, but already this was a lot to take in, so I think I'm going to leave it there for now in terms of modeling tools. There's plenty more tools uh, that you can play around with and try out for yourself. Uh, I introduce, you know, extrude and multi-cut and target weld and these tools first because they're the best way to ensure that your model remains clean and trouble-free. Um, even now we're like kind of, you can start to see we're getting kind of crazy with our, our edges. And, you know, when you're starting out it can just get overwhelming really quickly and if you start messing around with bevels and booleans and stuff, you can really start to find yourself in a place that you can't come back from. So again, always start simple uh, and slowly move your way up. Uh, this is a time-consuming process. This is, you know, you are making art even if it is, you know, phone chargers and, and Keurig cups and stuff when you start, but that's, you know, when you started drawing, you were drawing very simple objects and just like that, you know, you start small and work your way up. You don't draw a really complex eyeball and then try and figure out where the rest of the face is. Uh, so we'll discuss more tools and more stuff later, but I think this is enough to get you through the assignment. Uh, one last thing uh, on organization and, and uh, saving your sanity is if we check out the channel box over here in our inputs, you can see this big long list and it's, uh, you know, it's our history. It's all of our operations we've done so far. And over here in our outliner, you can see that we've got this P cube one and P cylinder one uh, transforms. Uh, you can see transform. It's just kind of a, a name for empty 3D object or null, if you want to call it that. These are just kind of empty groups. Uh, and these were created when we put that cylinder and that cube together. So this is uh, our current object and these are our two old objects that no longer exist. So eventually this is gonna, if you have a, you know, an older computer, 
uh, or not a lot of memory, you know, this stuff can really start to bog down your system. Uh, it's also, you know, garbage that when you throw it in under other softwares, uh, software packages, it's just gonna be gross and weird and you don't need it. Uh, and you don't really need it now either. You know, it'll prevent you from control Zing if you delete it, but uh, when you start to get close to the end or you start to feel your computer freaking out, uh, you can come up to edit, delete by type, and history, and that'll clear out your inputs, it'll clean up any extra transforms from, you know, merging pieces of geometry together. And also while we're here, uh, let's make sure to name it. So I'll just name it plug, and you can name it, you know, DC power, whatever you want to call it. Let's give it a good name, because um, when you start modeling scenes and stuff, you don't want there to just be a thousand cubes, you know, P cube one, P cube two, um, you know, just like you would name your Photoshop layers, uh, because I know that you're naming your Photoshop layers, because you're a professional. So this isn't by any means done, but it's a good start. Um, so good luck on your models this week. Uh, try and pick something sensible that's not too crazy, not too hard. Uh, you know, don't pick a baseball, but don't pick a car. Uh, you know, like this charger is pretty good. Um, what you'll start doing is looking at objects more critically and figuring out how difficult they actually are. So like a a DS, like a Nintendo DS, might be way too complex for this week, but maybe that's something you try to do later in the term, or maybe for a final even. So, I hope to hear from you guys if you're having trouble, and uh, good luck in your Maya journey.